What's up, pussies? I'm the Heavy Metal Dick, and this is Heavy Metal Homesteading. Today, we're back in the shop, uh, working on our vegan hunting trophies. So, the last episode, we went over uh, making the plaque, which is all done and ready to go. Uh, we're going to do some finishing on that today. But, uh, first off, we're going to actually mount our little fluffy fucking wolf buddy, who's now totally covered in sawdust and bullshit. Uh, we'll fucking figure out some way to clean him. So let's get to that. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, is fairly basic upholstery. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this guy on here, and we're just gonna trace out um, sort of a rough shape of um, the hole in the back of the head. I've got some fluff here from our uh, fucking penguin or whatever he was. Uh, we're just going to try to overstuff this head a little bit. Um, it'll just make it a little bit firmer when we mount it and uh, help it hold its shape just that much better. Okay, so we're going to rip this over onto the scroll saw. We're going to cut that out. <clears throat> and a quick sand. And there we've got a uh, little disc, roughly the shape of the wolf's uh, open orifice. Okay, so here we are back at the workbench. We've got our disc that is roughly the shape of the hole in the wolf. We've got stuffing just exploding out of this fucking guy, which is exactly what we wanted. And then we also have here a stapple gun. What for Mac and Stapples? So what we're going to do is we're just going to tuck this wood piece into the back of the wolf. And then we're just going to get it a little bit folded over there. Staple it on. And we're just going to work this around. Stuffing the fluff in. And uh, pulling the, the outside over. Stapling it in. Right, and there we have it, and he's going to sit right on that plaque just like that. So now we've got him mounted, we've got the plaque made. So our finished product's going to look something similar to that. Now we're going to put uh, a nice finish on this, and I actually have a really uh, a really cool finish that I've done on, uh, on pine wood similar to this. It looks really, really fucking cool. So, and it's super metal because it's black. So we're going we're gonna to show you how to do that. It's really, really interesting. So when I do finishing on these, I get the template that's got those finishing nails, and I put that right back on top of there. Uh, this has all been sanded and ready to go. And today we are using, not that shit, wrong shit. We're using uh, CIL Platinum Door and Trim Interior Exterior Gloss Pre-Tinted Onyx Black High Gloss Wood Paint. Um, the cool stuff about this high gloss wood paint is, like a wood stain, it will um, it'll show through some of the wood grain. Um, but there's another technique that I like to do to also get uh, a little bit extra wood grain to pop through. And this is uh, a combination of um, something I learned from my old man when I was like fucking, I don't know, 12 or something. And, uh, and something else that I figured out along the way on my own as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do before we put anything on here, we're just going to take a bit of steel wool, and we're going to rub it all over uh, with the grain. And what that will help do is it will help pull the winter wood um, up to the surface so that when we stain this, the winter wood stands up a little bit higher and the grain will show through a little bit more. And then it also, and then we're just going to make sure that we uh, get any of that excess um, steel wool off. I'm using a uh, thousand grit steel wool, or uh, double zero, I think, is the other name for it, depending upon where you're buying it. If you're a painter and you carry a pocket knife, I highly recommend the uh, the Gerber Pair Frame Two. It works great for opening paint cans. I also highly recommend that you don't forget to put gloves on before you open your fucking paint 
or your stain, like I do every fucking time. I always end up with shit all over my fucking hands. It's that time of year again, Mr. Johnson. Bend over. Turn your head and cough. Uh, I keep my paint brushes, or my stain brushes, rather, in... Uh, in a vat of paint thinner just keeps them uh, keeps them clean uh, so I just always make sure that I dry them off on paper towels so that whatever you know residual stains are in there um, doesn't end up on whatever I'm working on we're gonna put a really 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 light coat of this wood paint onto um, onto this thing here and uh, we're gonna do a bunch more coats than normal. You know, normally for something like this, you'd kind of do a coat, do a light stain, and then do a coat. Um, but like I say, this is a, a different sort of finish that I've figured out along the way that uh, it ends up looking really, really good. All right, so we're just going to leave that there to dry. Uh, overnight and then we'll come back uh, tomorrow and we'll do the we'll do the next coat all right so we're back it's been 24 hours uh, as you can see most of the brush strokes um, have sort of dried up and gone away and you can see the nice grain of the wood mostly showing through that's why we put such a thin coat on because that's the look that we're after you can see a lot more brush strokes in the back so I've got some uh, 150 grit sandpaper here. We're just going to give this a quick uh, hand sand all around. Just uh, We're going to work um, with the grain so that um, the grain comes out quite a bit better. And there we have it. So we've got the, the wood grain really, really showing through quite nicely again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to uh, our uh, double zero or thousand grit steel wool. We're just going to rub this <coughs> again with the grain. We're going to apply a fair amount of pressure because we really, really, really want to pick up that grain and get it to stand up. So when we do this process again, we end up with a similar result, but the black is blacker and the white is just as white. So I've already shaken up my paint can. Forgot to put gloves on beforehand yet again. Okay, so usually I start on the back. The first coat I didn't for whatever reason. Uh, and that's just because um, then you can sit it set your product on a wet side you know if it's a table or a chair or something I'll do the bottoms of the feet first and then let it sit on that because it doesn't really matter because no one's going to see it so if it gets messed up or scratched or whatever it's it's all good and again just another thin coat and then we give it another 24 hours. We do that once more. Um, and after the second coat, we'll be able to tell if it needs uh, a third and, and so on and so forth. Usually, uh, two or three coats is good for this technique. Uh, sometimes you will have to go a few more. So we'll see you again in 24 hours. Okay, so we're back after 24 hours. I've got some sandpaper lined up here. I've got uh, 150, 220, and 400. I'm fairly confident that uh, this isn't going to need any more, so we're just going to go ahead, sand it up, and see how it looks. And if it looks like it does need another coat, then we will figure that out. That. Also, it's really important that you do do a full 24-hour cure on this because if you try to take it, uh, a little bit like, you know, once it's just not tacky, you try to take it the, the next layer down as you're sanding. Um, won't be totally cured, and it will start to gum up on your sandpaper and smudge onto the uh, the other parts of the wood, which is totally defeats the purpose of what we're after here. All right, and there we have it. Fuck does that ever look good. 
the white and the black showing through. Um, and leaving the border really dark kind of like gives a bit of a contrast. So now that we've got this all sanded up and pretty pretty, um, I want to just, um, I want to get this set and cleared so that it's going to last. And what I like to use for that is Verithane Professional Clear Finish. Depending upon the project, I either will uh, paint it on or sometimes I will use it in a spray can. Um, I find the results to be almost identical. I'm sure there are guys out there that prefer one way or the other and think that the other way is fucking bullshit, but in my opinion, they both work fantastic. So we're just going to get uh, get a brush here that's relatively clean. Forgot to sand the back. Now because it's the back, that's, I'm just kind of sanded off most of the brush marks and that's all I'm really worried about. We're not trying to make it look super pretty. And we're just going to put a pretty generous coat of this clear on the back and all over. And this is just going to help make that, uh, make the contrast shine through a little bit nicer. It'll give us a, uh, a really nice, pretty washable finish. And uh, it'll put some of that shine back on that we've taken off from doing all that sanding. Alright. Nice and shiny, shiny. So we're going to let that sit for one more 24-hour period. And then we will come back tomorrow and we will put our little friend, the wolf, onto said shield. And then we'll talk about the reason behind why I'm making these, which I'm sure you're all really excited to find out about. We'll see you tomorrow. Alright, so we're here again. Uh, this is sat for 24 hours. The shield, she is quite pretty. The lighting in here isn't very good, but it looks really, really nice. We're, uh, we're in here today after a long, hard day at work. So, it's already beer o'clock. But we're so close to getting this finished, I just wanna I just wanna finish it all the way. Okay, so we've got uh, some one inch uh, finishing nails. Broad nailer. Get her all loaded up. And then I've got some cabinet makers glue here. Um, so we're just gonna glue this up on the back. Look at that. Isn't that fucking adorable? Don't you want to have that hanging on your wall? I'm just going to lay some paper towel down here so I don't get this guy all covered and fucking schmoo off the old workbench. And always make sure that, uh, you know, you put your safety glasses on when you start working with the air nailer because you never know which direction she might go. And there we have it. She's all fucking done skis, bud. Alright, so the reason that we're making these fuckers is uh, starting a Patreon page. And hopefully by the time this is edited and, and up on the interwebs, I've gotten my life together. And there's a link in the description box to the Patreon page. It might be pretty basic at this point because I'm just getting started. But I got a lot of other cool projects that I, uh, that I really want to do. Uh, me and a buddy want to build uh, a hot tub out in the middle of fucking nowhere on a chunk of property that uh, belongs to his family. I'm going to be totally off-grid, so we're going to, you know, build a, a self-pumping water pump. We're going to create uh, a heating coil, a heat siphon, all this stuff to pump water from a creek about 500 meters away into a hot tub. We're going to build the tub ourselves out there. But that's going to take some money, and I don't have a lot of that. Um, so we're going to start a Patreon page, hopefully we can get some uh, get some more views through that, uh, generate some more ad revenue, and also hopefully with, uh, with things like this, uh, we're going to look into uh, sticker packs, patches for all you other metalheads that want to put a fucking heavy metal home center patch on, uh, on your vest or your jacket. One, uh, another video that I'm going to do pretty soon, hopefully, 
uh, will be, I've got this fucking great idea in my head for a logo, and that'll be the logo that ends up on, uh, on the patches and the stickers and stuff. So there'll be a couple other things. Uh, Kegerator, if you guys watched the, uh, the off-grid beer dispenser, I'm gonna put up, um, something for one of those, too, if you guys chuck me a bunch of money, because it's a really expensive thing to build. Um, I'll build one and ship it out to you. So hopefully we can get some money together, get uh, get a real homestead going, get some bigger, cooler projects on the go. Get into the description box. Um, check out my Facebook, my Twitter. Stay on top of what's going on. Give us likes, give us shares, comment. All that stuff helps out. Uh, and check out the Patreon page. Check me a couple bucks here and there. And I don't know how it's going to be yet, but... These guys are definitely going to be on there. This one, for sure, uh, will be one of the first ones to go out. And on the Facebook page, as these are done, I'm going to post pictures of what's available. So if you want to get on Patreon and make a donation and specifically request one, then we can do that, too. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for helping out. Get on Patreon. Buy some shit. Send me some donations so I can uh, provide you with some better content. Fuck you.